and welcome back to New Ridge Auto 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 things that I learned as a student at the University of Virginia as part of a computer science degree. And today we're going to be talking about your life and what you can accomplish with it. And if you're like the maybe 2002 me, you probably haven't put much thought into that. Yet. Uh, you probably aren't sure what to do with it probably lost a few years waiting for life or someone in your life to give you a clue of exactly what you should be doing with it. Maybe you've wasted some time on TV, video, or whatever the technological uh, stimulant of your is. Or maybe not. Maybe you're gay, maybe you're not. Maybe you have know what you want, maybe you don't. But you might not think that you should be acting towards it or that you can be acting towards it. I used to think that the path of my life was more or less inevitable and that it was pointless to dwell too long on it, that the world was on the brink of a war between a global hegemon uh, with bases in like 170 different odd countries, and that the global economy was in free fall from the dot-com bubble right before I hit the job market. There was a couple ongoing genocide campaigns. Uh, there was some, certainly nothing I could do about pretty much any of the big issues of the day. Uh, I was going to be poor, or if lucky, you know, I'd find a job uh, and end up in the middle class in some shitty job somewhere, uh, forgotten about in the pages of history. Probably with a child or two burying my genes, much like most of my ancestors, uh, that the government would end up forcing me to pay for. At 15, I thought by 20 I'd be frozen to death on some street corner. By 20, I thought by 25 I'd be frozen to death on some street corner. By 25, I thought by 30 I'd be frozen to death on some street corner. And after 30, things kind of seemed different again. Uh, but I thought many things that turned out to be not quite as pessimistic as I hoped. Uh, I might be have my timing wrong, sure, but perhaps I might have been overly pessimistic about some things. Now, the longer that you keep your eyes open to the perspective of history, the future, the, er, and the future, the more that you can see the actions of individuals uh, now uh, can, or the, the actions of individuals kind of in the past can open the way for potential action in the future. And sure, you might not be able to do much about your present situation. The peasants who stood up to the Sun King, many of them died, and a lot of them had really terrible experiences that it was only matched by living under said Sun King. But they also ended up eventually cutting off its heads, uh, and the heads of most of the royals at the time that were kind of causing the situation in the first place. Change can happen. That wasn't the only big change in history. Uh, as Sean Kennedy kind of points out, Hitler was one guy. Sure, he had a horrible impact and killed tens of millions of people. Uh, now, but that was definitely more impact than your typical art student uh, who kind of fails out of art school uh, has upon the world. Uh, unless, you know, outside of art, of course. Uh, unless, of course, you consider you know, killing millions of people art. Uh, that I leave up to you. Uh, either way, he had a way with people in mass media. And it, the question is kind of open. Could he have used his power for something other than violence and hatred? But you probably already know all that. That much is obvious. You've probably heard that. You've listened to the Sean Kennedy rants that I'm getting this from. But it bears repeating, because regardless of the broader forces at play, you get to choose to a large extent not just what happens later. And, and the earlier you make your change, the longer the details of the change have to pronounce themselves, but also which part of the future you get to experience. Obviously, you don't get to choose the whole picture, but you get to choose a little thread of it. One of the things that you gain with time is an appreciation for where and how much freedom you actually have. If you have any at all, of course, your life isn't resigned up to fate. Uh, a lot of people are so afraid of doing unconventional things that they never even try them, especially big changes. They stay with the easy to achieve, with the local stuff. They stay within the lines, but don't. Bide your time. Wait the current situation out. Write down what things you want to change. Maybe keep it in a secret place and add it to when you notice things that you can help to get there. And if you don't know how to keep secrets from your surrounding environment, look into how you might do that. If your environment doesn't allow it, burn it into your memory or something. Your situation will change and you will change with it. Sometimes you'll grow tighter coupled to your situation. And sometimes your situation grows absurd and frail, and your the the binds that or the, the the strands that bind themselves to you weaken, and it's easier to leave if you're constantly looking for a way out. 
it's easy to just relax at the end of the day and procrastinate, uh, maybe with a glass of wine if you can afford it. Uh, and sometimes that is the way out, and a way to keep from getting too exhausted. Or sometimes you just alt tab back into the constant hum of distraction. Sometimes you stay focused long enough to make even a silly YouTube video. And sure, there are some people who don't have a hell of a lot of choice in, about their situation right now. There's a lot of slaves in uh, the Middle East right now uh, who are beaten and worse no matter what they do. Uh, and their options are alto not altogether that good. Uh, yet they have a lot closer access to some of the most horrible people in the world than we, at least here watching this video, do. Uh, and even a scratch can become infected uh, as much as it hurts to inflict it. Uh, the medical supplies in that particular region of the world aren't necessarily all that good. Of course, you know, you have to make that call and decide whether or not you want to be that important or not, and to whom. Either way, be the hammer, not the anvil. You can make the change in your life and you can live with the consequences, or you can die with the consequences. You're going to die in either case. To a large extent, you get to choose what your risk profiles are for different kinds of deaths and different kinds of lives. Obviously, you don't always get to choose, but you do get to choose a lot. Keep in mind that no matter what you do, you're going to bear the scars for it. Sometimes the scars are red marks on your body. Sometimes there are extra pounds of fat on your thighs. They're all scars in either case. The university is a big change, but one that you don't have to make. Plenty of people make a good living in the trades, and the trades aren't impossible to get into, though it can be difficult at times to get into them. It's no more difficult than getting into and succeeding at a university. What do these changes look like? They look like situations where you run out of time, where you have to start choosing between one activity and another, or spending time with one friend or another. Those are little chances, but over time those little chances do add up to big chances. There's a trade-off between exhausting yourself on the little things, bike shedding, and strengthening your own grit and building your own success on small things. It's worth thinking about if you've got the extra cycles. Big chances are where you run into major life decisions, and are especially unsure of which of two options to choose, but you're forced to choose one. Of course, see the false dilemma video for reasons why you might be blinded to other videos, but no doubt you'll probably face some. Uh, you might choose right, you might choose wrong, make the right decision, but don't be too hard on yourself for making the wrong decisions. A bad plan today is better than the best plan tomorrow. Looking fate in the eye can be scary. You won't know what to do. But regardless of what happens, you are the only one who can control how your life turns out. This doesn't mean that your opportunities are going to be remotely fair. They won't. But un however unfair the options you have, however limited your chances, you are going to be the one that figures out which of the chances your life is presented with is going to follow. You are the art artist, and your medium is your current choices. Make something beautiful or don't. It's up to you. And there may never be an audience capable of understanding what you do with it. Some decisions are going to take a long time to fully carry out. Multiple generations in a culture that facilitates multi-generation decision making, sometimes. But you don't have to put up with what your parents say that you can accomplish. Although, as for the horrible, horrible freedom video, you may have to be careful when deciding what to do with your living situation with regards to your parents. Or what job the job market says that you can accomplish. Or what your teachers say you can accomplish. Only you can make that call and who you reward for participating in your life and who you twist a knife into is up to you. There's a lot of changes coming towards us. From the perspective of the beginning of the last century, the exponential change in the information processing technology was something that would have stretched the credulity of most people looking at it. The next century will be just as wild, and over the long now, things are going to get really, really weird. But as slippery as that slope is, much of the rest of your life will remain involving other human beings and politics. And the politics can slide many different ways, as discussed in the Slippery Slope video. You're going to need tools, and you're going to need knowledge of how to use those tools. You're going to need a lot of things, but most of what you need is, uh, or most of what you need to know is that there's going to come a time in your life where you're in control, and that control is terrifying. There's no bullshitting around it. There are decisions that are really uncomfortable, but you have to make them, and it is exactly in those decisions where much of the balance of your life is at stake, that you can see your way through to what, quote, the hound of heaven, quote, has planned for you. You're going to need people, too. 
I could tell you of, of the people I've interacted with and helped in my lifetime, or I could tell you the opportunities and how I've seized and not seized them properly, but that would miss the point. You can estimate what your best action is. There may be a maximal number of heartbeats that you will ever have, but it would, it would be a waste to consider that number fixed since you can always cut your own heart out. From this contradiction, that it is both your fate to die early and not to die early, from the proof by contradiction, we do not have to accept the assumption that fate holds us. The maximum number is not something you'll ever know, since if you did know it, you could act against it. It's pointless to waste your time on it. There's other numbers you can know. Focus your problem-solving talents, as Paul yet describes them, uh, on those things. Concern yourself with the limits that you know about, rather than the ones you can't. Interact with the limits in your life enough to learn all about them, and probe them occasionally to make sure that they're still there. Learn them and learn where they can be bent, and which rules can be broken. Treat this as an optimization problem, and try different approaches with it. Verify your presuppositions, and use all of your data. Don't argue or live from ignorance, or do just any old thing because you have to do something, I live under the politician's syllogism. Determine what causes your limits, and work at undoing that if it makes sense to do so. I could tell you how to make a decision properly, or how to weigh probabilities, or how to make the best decision by preparing for it, and or not having to make a hard call in the first place. But the problem is, there are decisions that you'll be forced to make that will test your character. And it's up to you to decide who you are by what you choose above yourself to reinforce, by which activities you will allow yourself to fall into by which friends and which tribe that you choose, by how you see yourself, by whether or not you choose to increase or decrease your grit. All of it, you. That is the point of this video. You have to choose. Life does not choose you. Or rather, if you put the onus on yourself, it's easier to see the levers of control that are availed to you. You have the ability to interact with and impact a lot more people than, say, a cockroach. And you are only partially defined by your environment. You don't commit the ecological fallacy when thinking about yourself. Part of this is because you can observe yourself and understand your own situation and remember what works and what doesn't and reason by circular methods and kind of bring yourself out of and bootstrap out of any particular context, at least in your mind. You have the final say, and that say trumps fate. It trumps any supposed God's plan. It is decided minute by minute. Every tang of loneliness, every sharp stab of pain, every swirl of spinning lights, every plant and animal you kill to feed yourself, and everything that you hold on to, you are doing this. Continue on and share your experience where you seek to gain the advantage of science. And to each appearance or situation that presents itself to you, say yes, say no, or say mew. The choice is yours.